You know what else that means? That means I haven't been peeing on the garden enough to keep all the critters away. Good morning, Modern Steaders. It's Friday, and Friday is Modern Steader Update. Let's start with the Icelandic chicks that we hatched out a few weeks ago. You want to show them the chicks? Oh, they're rambunctious this morning. They're starting to feather out nicely. That's just too funny that that was an all yellow chick and now it's feathers on its wings are nice and dark. Let's check out the gray one. It's a beautiful little bird. Yes you are. They are doing very good, nice and healthy. Coming out. We've been asked by quite a few modern steaders if we move the Icelandic chickens. And the answer is yes we do. With there being three in the chicken tractor, we don't need to move the chicken tractor that often, which is nice. Hey, you ate the food this time, Rufus, and not my finger. Thank you. Right, Rufus? Yep. You scared him, Pluto. Now you did. The last week and a half, we've been getting some really warm weather lately. So the gardens have still been doing good. The squashes are dying off over here. Let's see and check on it and see if we have any buttercup squash or egg con squash over here. They're still way too small. They started growing. They just didn't have a long enough time. We got plenty of zucchini still growing and cucumbers. We're hoping for a much better growing season weather-wise next year so we can get a bigger harvest and then we'll be able to put it to use and get more out of it with having the outdoor kitchen built. We'll be able to be a lot more productive with how we can and preserve all of our food for the winter time. Here's our, we're hoping for a much better growing season weather-wise next year so we can get a bigger harvest and then we'll be able to put it to use and get more out of it with having the outdoor kitchen built. We'll be able to be a lot more productive with how we can and preserve all of our food for the winter time. Here's our purple hay bale gardens. The cabbages are starting to form up. Hopefully we still have plenty of time. Let's we'll see how the weather goes this year. The broccoli's doing good. We're just hoping we have enough time to get some bounty out of these plants. It'll be pretty awesome to have purple cabbage and purple broccoli. The heritage meat birds that we got from Cackle Hatchery are doing awesome. They're growing nice. They love the water is set up. They love getting moved to their fresh pasture daily.
This is the other half of the order we got. We have 25 and 25. And I believe we have one hen in the batch. They're supposed to all be males. But her right here, I believe that one's actually, we might have two hens. Those two right there are smaller and they don't have a big comb. But they are very healthy and they're growing at a nice, fast rate for us. We're very pleased. And the three khaki Campbells, we believe they're females and they're doing awesome. Pluto, stay over here. The other day, New York City was out of water. The reserves were bone dry. It ended up raining so much in less than an hour. I don't know if you can see in there. But New York City's water was replenished. We were about two inches from the top after it rained. It was crazy. I was very thankful for that rain. Now I don't have to worry about lugging water out to New York City. That's always good when that happens. They're cleaning it up nicely out here. There's still a lot of apples for them that they haven't touched. I'm debating whether how long I should keep them in this area for. It'd be nice if we could get them to start eating some of these apples. The chickens ate the apples last year, so I don't know if they need to sit longer and ferment a little bit before they'll start eating them, but there's a lot of apples in here. Just look at all the apples. The apples in here are pretty small, so there's not too much you can do with them other than feed them to your animals right now. You enjoy doing the chores, Pluto. There she comes. What are you doing? You're crazy. The other week we were worried about getting a frost. In the last two weeks, it's been in the 70s, almost 80s here. The weather is crazy. I'm assuming it's from the hurricane season pushing up the warm air. And all next week, it's supposed to be pretty darn warm up here too, which is good for our garden. We can extend the season a little bit. That means more food. The strawberries are doing awesome. They're putting off so many shoots and runners. These will all turn into plants next year. This bed is just gonna be filled with strawberry plants. The onions are still doing amazing. They're nice and plump still, the tops. The bases are starting to fill in nicely. And you're starting to get a good thick skin on them so we'll be able to save them once they're ready. The corn's nice and tall. It's plump, so I'll have to check these and maybe eat them soon. Yeah, that feels nice. We won't be home tonight, so I'm not gonna pick them yet. 
The string beans, meh. The purple ones have gone by, but we had good luck with those this year. The smaller, the shorter corn in front is our black popping corn, and next year we'll have to plant more of it. The corn was an experiment. We started those in soil blocks in the basement this winter to see how well they would do up here. And it's worked awesome. We started some right here from seed. And as you can see, only one started. Oh, two started, and that's it. The rest of those are from soil blocks. The carrots look nice. Turnips there, they didn't take. I think it was because of the beginning of the growing season, we were getting two inches of rain after two inches of rain after two inches of rain. The tomatoes are still producing like crazy. The tomatoes are producing like crazy. They're still making a nice, beautiful tomato right now. That's nice. I just love all the color variations in there. The peppers, they're getting there. They're lightening up. I think it's because they're getting ready to turn orange. These are orange peppers. So maybe we'll get some ripe peppers before the cold weather kicks in again. Well, I guess the chickens are gonna get that because somebody else started eating it. Man, you gotta hate when that happens. Oh well, we'll turn it into chicken feed. You know what else that means? That means I haven't been peeing on the garden enough to keep all the critters away. I'll have to come out here tonight when the sun sets and pee around my garden to keep the critters away. It works, and when you stop doing it, that's what happens. Let's go check on the other hay bale garden in Potato Tower. The spaghetti squash are doing nice. These should finish up before we get the frost. We got a couple of nice white pumpkins. Those are looking nice. Another one there. This buttercup squash won't make it in time, but we'll turn it into pig food or chicken food. Nothing's gonna go to waste. The potato plants, they've all went by, so we need to check and see how many potatoes we have. We've been very happy with the success of planting in our spent hay bales from our winter chicken coop this growing season. We've had awesome luck with that. All we've had to do is plant our soil block transplant in these, and that's it. We haven't watered them, done nothing else. We just let Mother Nature take care of it, and we've got a lot of produce from it. And look how green those plants are. They're getting plenty of nitrogen. We'll save the pigs for last today. Get the cider press. We're getting it ready. There's the handle, waiting to get used. If you haven't seen any of those videos, I'll put a link to them right here. We're collecting apples, getting ready to make cider. Got another bucket going. Here's the Kalamazoo Prince wood cook stove we put in the other day. There's the chimney. I'll put a link to that video right here. We're waiting on some stovepipe pieces show you what we have. This goes on the back of the stove like so and it's oval so I have a seven inch chimney I have a seven inch to eight inch adapter coming that we can, we're hoping we're gonna be able to squish and get it to fit and then convert it to our eight inch. Fingers crossed. The other thing that might be a challenge is they switched the way they've done these. So on this one, you have the male adapter coming off, so you need female adapters on this end. Well, this is the opposite. This is male coming off, going up. So it's kind of backwards. We're gonna have to see how we can get that all to work. We'll have to get a union or some sort. Once we get the adapter in the male, we'll have a better idea of how to get it all to work. We ordered a couple of stainless steel tables to put in here. Then we have a stainless steel mop sink that we've collected over the years and brought with us through our travels that we'll be putting out here too. So we'll be installing that stuff soon. We're looking forward to getting the outdoor kitchen all set up. 
We're getting it ready for our hand-hewn farm three-day pig harvesting class. That's at the end of October. Last time I checked, we had one ticket left to it. So if anybody wants to come to the three-day pig harvesting class, uh, there's a link down in the description below. Go click on the link, and that'll bring you over to Hand Hewn Farms' website where you can purchase the ticket. Let's go check on the famous pigs. That's what everybody wants to see. That's the outhouse right there we're working on. You can't see it. You'll have to watch the latest videos to see what's up with our composting outhouse. I think they're sleeping. Shh. Let's wake up. Good morning, pigs. Don't look so ambitious. Good morning. Good morning. Did we wake you? You know it's after 8 o'clock in the morning. You should be up eating apples. Converting them into bacon for us. Did the heat take it out of you guys yesterday too? It was a warm one. Yep. Oh, big yawn. Oh, oh. You got a dirty nose. Look at that nice set of hams. Yep. It's gonna be some nice hams. And the bacon comes from that area. There's been a lot of comments lately about the pigs and harvesting them and turning them into our food and that's gonna be hard to do. And then it's gonna be sad and people are gonna miss them. Yes, it's gonna be very bittersweet, but that's why we raise our animals here so we can have awesome food and we give them the best life that we can. I'm sure a lot of the modern setters eat meat and we choose to eat meat too. We just choose to be intentional about it. We know if we're eating meat that that was an animal. We know if we eat any food that it was alive at some point. Even a carrot was alive until you picked it out of the ground. So it takes life to make life. And we need to be thankful for that and respectful for that. And if we grow our own food, we're more aware of that. When you grow your own food, you're aware of that. And you need to respect your animals and give them the best life possible. Because I'd rather know where my food came from and know that it had a great life than just to go buy it at the store and not think about it. The pork and the bacon you get from a store, that's what it was before. You just don't know what kind of life it lived. I can sleep well at night knowing my food lived an awesome life. I wouldn't mind living a life like that if I was a pig. I'd be happy to. They're getting to do what pigs were meant to do. And that just makes me happy. Yes, it'll be a bittersweet day, but I'm a human, I'm an omnivore, and I need meat. I need bacon. And this is what it takes to get that great, delicious, healthy bacon for me and our family. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it, it really helps the channel grow. If you haven't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button down below. And if you hit the bell button, that turns on notifications and lets you know every time we upload a video and go live. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to check out www.lumnaacres.com. We'll leave that down in the description below too. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom.